Hello, this is the feature overview of the Clearview Goggle version. Uh, we're going to be going over software version 1.05. So this is a, uh, displaying live video right now. I just have a signal being generated and you can also see the uh, OSD as uh, on the left top there. These are the stock parameters for the OSD as you will see when your module ships. The first thing on the OSD is the lock indicator. The next thing is your frequency and band. So right now we're on Fatshark 1. Uh, then the actual frequency. The next thing is which antenna it's currently using. And then the uh, RSSI meter. And finally, the user text. To enter the menu, all you do is click twice and then do a long press. So now we're in the main menu. Uh, the first option is always to go back to live video. To scroll through options, you do a single press. And to select options, or to change values, you can usually do a hold of the button. The first option we can do is change our band. So right now we're on the Fat Shark band. So it'll come up with this pop-up on the right, and you can change to Race Band. Uh, X usually stands for Custom. And then if you have more options, you can go ahead and scroll through here. So on this menu, you can see um, up top, the blinking one is the one that you're looking at. So it'll scroll down. Now we can go to High Band or IMD5, um, and then on the bottom you can see exactly what frequencies are on that band. So you can see IMD5 has only five frequencies and the last three are blank. So you can go ahead and scroll through and select which band you want to use. The ones with strike throughs on them, those are disabled. I'll show you where to disable those later. So as we scroll through, lots of options. Personally, I only like to enable race band and maybe IMD5, so this menu would only have three options, being those two bands and the exit button. Let's go back in the menu and go to the next option. So here's your video format. You might be familiar with this if you've used a Clearview before. So Clearview needs to know what kind of camera you're using. However, now there is an auto mode. We'll leave it in auto for now. If you're flying by yourself and you only fly NTSC or PAL cameras, we do recommend setting that to NTSC or PAL as applicable. Auto mode works great, but it does result in higher locking times. So in a race scenario, if you need to power cycle your goggles or anything like that, you might have better results staying on a certain format. The next option that we're on right now is the CV brightness. What this option does is change, changes how bright your image is once Clearview locks. If you notice that when you turn on your quad, the image is a certain brightness, and then when it locks, it gets darker, you can go ahead and increase this brightness. On the flip side of this, if, if you tune your camera to be whatever brightness you want once you lock, then what you can use this brightness option is to change the relative brightness of the OSD. So if you want your OSD to be brighter compared to the image, you're actually going to want to select a brightness of dim negative 1 or negative 2. So that is how the brightness adjustment works. Going back to the menu, we can look at the band analyzer application. The band analyzer is a unique feature to the Clearview um, that has a lot more options than traditional band analyzers. You can see uh, we can select different bands to look at. It will also scan all the frequencies in between. So you can see as I change the band, the, uh, the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are where the actual channels are, so you can see how they're spaced. One interesting band is the E band. So here is E band. You can see the bottom four frequencies and the top four are on the edge of the band. You can avoid most pilots, however, you should check the legalities before using these frequencies. One more mode that the spectrum analyzer has is the spectrum mode. So the spectrum mode basically just uses all the common frequencies, so and they're ev pretty evenly spaced. So you can go, go through and see both what frequency you're on and what the signal strength is. So you can see we're close to 5733 as far as the channel we're emitting. Our, our, our up generator is actually on 5740. So the next thing is the Lost Drone Finder application. Um, this will be useful if you lose your quad somewhere but the battery is still plugged in. 
All you need to do is tell it which directional antenna you have. If you're using Omnis, you can use either one of these um, and then use a body blocking technique by putting the clear view close to your body and spinning around, and that will give you a good indication of where the quad is. So you can select your antenna, and then once it says this text it is searching, all you need to do is plug in a pair of headphones and listen to the tones. The higher the tone, the closer the quad is, or that is the direction you actually need to go. Finally, we can go into the setup options. Here's where you configure both options for the clear view, um, set your custom frequencies and bands, and also change your OSD content. So here's the on-screen display menu. So you can adjust the position of it. Um, we have eight predefined positions. These also align uh, common OSDs like a Betaflight OSD, uh, have a certain position requirements for the content. The Clearview lines up with that so you don't have the Clearview on some weird line that doesn't actually exist. The next option right here is the indicator. You can actually change this on the CVG from these two options. The next thing is band channel. So that's, as I talked about earlier, F1. So you can hide that. Channel frequency is just the actual frequency. The antenna use shows which antenna it's currently using. So if you have a certain antenna disabled, um, it'll usually stay on the same antenna and that'd be a pr pretty useless thing for your OSD, so I'd recommend taking that out. The next thing is flight crosshairs. This is an experimental feature that will be probably working next update. The uh, RSSI meter shows the signal strength of the Clearview's video. This is not your quad's RSSI, this is the Clearview RSSI. And there's two options for that. You can show both antennas or just the maximum. Finally is the user message. So on the very right side where it says Clearview, you can change this to your pilot name or whatever you like. Well, actually it'll do mid left. The monitor we're using right now sort of cuts off the edges of the screen. Next is features and options. So these are for the Clearview. One unique thing of the, clear, of the Clearview goggle software is that you can have user profiles. So you have multiple different quads that you fly that you like having different options or bands. Say you have a race quad that you want to stay on race, race band configuration. That's where you can set this. So you can enable user profile and rename it if you'd like. The next thing is startup mode. So once you plug in your goggles, you can either have the Clearview go directly to live video or go to the band analyzer application first. The next thing is when you're tuning channels, Say you hit the buttons for the channel up and channel down on your goggles. Normally, the, the clear view will show you which frequency it's tuning to and then go back to live video. If you, if you don't need that or you know exactly what you're, what you're doing, you can change this to instant. It won't show you what channel it is until you lock and then you'll know. So here's your antenna mode. The first mode is clear view. This is what we recommend for the most time. Uh, diversity is a traditional RSSI diversity, so this is what most modules use to select which antenna to use. It's based on RSSI, which actually isn't a very good indicator of how good your signal is. The next thing is, say you're flying with one antenna. Maybe you only have one antenna right now and you need to buy another, or you just want to stay on a directional antenna. That's when you would use this option. Please note, let me show you the goggles. You have the goggles outline right here. So we're looking at the screen right now. So the left antenna is over here and the right antenna is over there. Next is the RSSI audio warning. So if your RSSI is low, the audio, it will generate signals on the audio to tell you. This will only show up if you actually have headphones plugged in. You can set the threshold that that applies to by changing low, medium, high, or just turn it off if you don't need those warnings. I, I like to fly with it off because I actually run audio on my quad. The next thing is uh, CV unlock mode. So we have slow and fast. For most pilots, you're going to want to use slow. The only situation where you want to use fast is if you're using multiple cameras, like a camera switcher on a fixed wing aircraft. Say you have one on your canopy and one facing downward. If you change this to fast, then as you change cameras, Clearview will acquire a lock faster. In slow racing mode, 
it is more immune to other racers' noise. This setting we recommend keeping on fast unless you can't achieve a lock. Here's where you set up your custom bands. So earlier I showed you how to select a band that you want to use. Here is how you actually change what the custom band frequencies are. So you can see X1, X2, X3, and X4. So all you can do is disable and enable with the active button right there. So I'll keep these disabled. And then to change frequencies, you go here. Say we want to change change this to 5740. I'll go ahead and enter the frequency. So change this to 7 by holding. Hold to select. Click to scroll. And one last digit. So there we go. Now we have 5740 as our first frequency. Instead of using frequencies, you can also just find the band and channel. So say we want it to be race band 4. I'll go to R and then select 4. And there you go, 5769. So you can select any number of these and as you're aware, your goggles have 8 frequency options using the channel button. If you go to a frequency option that's not enabled, it'll just keep whatever last frequency you were using. Here's to restore factory settings. You can use this if you want to go back to what the defaults are. So that should uh, be it for the video. If you have any questions, please let us know. As we uh, update new features and things, we will add notes to this video, and once it changes enough, we will probably remake the video. Thanks for listening.